Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> This is like the sweetest <laughs> pack ever. That is awesome. <laughs> These sets are made for people like me. I've been playing the game for a long time and I love limited and Modern Horizon sets are perfect for that. The cards are super juiced and everything is far more exciting and fun to play. And everything is so strong, but everybody has these strong decks as well. So it's, it's kind of like haymaker after haymaker. And this is the one time when the gloves get to come off for the designers and they get to just unload all these cool, weird ideas. Hey, do you want to put that in the set? Yes, I do. For Modern Horizons 3, we knew that we were going to be doing Eldrazi, we knew we were going to be doing Energy, and we were going to be doing these sort of build around, transform planeswalkers. Everything started from there and then just rippled outward as we developed the set. So for 30 years, like basically two thirds of my life, I've been playing Magic. I've seen the Modern Horizons grow um, and, and develop, and it's my jam, you know, it's, it, it's exactly what I'm about. The one thing that kind of unites everyone who works at Wizards of the Coast is we love magic. The people that worked on the set, the people that even work on any part of magic are magic players. We still play every day. We follow and pay attention to like the trends and what's happening in, in real life tournaments. We wouldn't do that if we weren't passionate about it. You know, before I came to Wizards, uh, I was a very competitive magic player. That was always my favorite type of tournament was, was modern, where it's like there's tons of interesting possibilities. The metagame is always going to be very fresh. There's so many options and cards that you can kind of express yourself in just whatever way you feel like it. If you like a, something about magic, it's in modern for you somewhere. I mean, that that's the fun. It's like you give people more toys and then they find different ways to break it. Me, I'm excited for when the set comes out. Look at that. Oh, look at that beautiful right. display. <laughs> the first time you actually see the real glossy magic cards in your hand. Whoa. Is that our boy? What is that? I think it is. is I think that's now our... it's in a real magic card, official, crisp. Really the first, first one of these I've opened. I'm trying to hold it all in right now. <laughs> <laughs> You've worked with it for years, and you still get this sense of awe when you get to open those packs. Yeah. You know this is a real magic set because we gave players a way to elk stuff. Oh. <laughs> a lot of the appeal of formats like Modern, like Legacy, like Pioneer, is that if you buy a deck, you're going to be able to play it for a really long time, ideally forever. We also want people whose decks maybe haven't gotten new tools in a while to make sure that they do have an outlet to be able to get new things. And then there's, I'll, I'll call the audience that loves powerful cards. I have to recalibrate my entire brain around picking these really powerful cards. It was a couple months of us kind of locking ourselves on a different floor from the rest of the design teams, get through the list of all the cards we want to see in play, and we would print it out of these printers that print, you know, magic cards, which is pretty cool, and then assign them out every week and be like, let's do a report every couple days on how things are going, how are the cards looking. An hour playing is often worth, you know, just hours of conversation. I can feel when things are coming together, and I can feel when things need revised. Part of the fun thing about, like, early design is you want to explore what's fun. What part what parts of this right. do we like? What parts do we need to move on from? We've got some playtest versions of this card so we can kind of see how it evolved, right? And what we found was this deck had so many weird lands that made colorless mana that it was super hard to cast this card before and after. You're playing and, you know, Michael Majors, the lead designer, will come up behind you and be like, oh, all of a sudden your 4-4 four four is a 3-3. Three three. Or you're like, hey, this says these words. Does it mean that? And it's like, no, no, oh, that was the old version. Scratch out, right? By the time you get to the end, you really are like, wow, this is revolutionized. This has really come together. And so playtest cards represent all of this change, all of the work that we do. It's kind of fun to see what you designed to put into the set versus what the players do with it. So there's people like me who just love to draft. I love drafting. Drafting is my bread and butter. I am a draft fanatic. The Modern Horizon sets are some of my favorite of all time to draft. Oh, that oh, is. Yeah, that that's wow, that's really cool. cool. Really cool. You keep getting multiple <laughs> rares. Well, I 10 mana, what is your <laughs> When you start opening these cards, it's like, wow, wow, wow. And you have to pick one of them each time, but they are really amped up. Unfortunately, your opponent's also powered up, but that, that's just what makes for compelling, uh, fun games. We've really made sure that a lot of the different two-color pair archetypes are very loud about what they're trying to do. Energy looks like one that they actually wanted to make one of the hallmarks of the set, and it's a really cool additional resource that you can manage that isn't life total or mana. Early on, the team sits down and says, all right, we have 10 color pairs. We're gonna have Eldrazi, we're gonna have Energy, but also we have to figure out 
how are they going to mix? With Modern Horizons, the power level is clearly a bit higher. The three Eldrazi Titans are here, they're returning. If you thought Emrakul was exciting, we have both Ulamog and Kozilek that I hope will also blow your socks off. For me, Emrakul, the world anew, it's this amazing like 12-12. That will represent the enormity of Emrakul. And this has madness. Like if you have six colorless and you discard it, you can play it for basically half its cost. I'm super stoked for Eldrazi. These cards go huge. They're really strong, but you have to work for these cards. And that's the type of card that I really like. It makes my brain start to spin about how can I put these together to get this huge payoff. So whenever you look at the new Kozilek, manifesting is not something that you normally get to do in a magic set. With Kozilek, you get to find whatever your high impact cast trigger is going to be throughout all of Magic's history, and then how do we make that powerful enough to hang in modern? When it comes to a Horizon set, we generally know that there's sort of an expectation that there's gonna be some sort of free spell cycle. We did the Evoke Elementals in MH2, the Forces in MH1. For MH3, we have the Flares. So we definitely needed an exciting new twist card. So instead of pitching a card from your hand, you actually need to sacrifice a non-token creature on the battlefield of the corresponding color. So it's an interesting new dynamic. Flare of Cultivation was one that we spent a ton of development cycles on and some versions of Eldrazi that were trying to go further up the curve and cast bigger spells. We wanted to make sure that they're fun and not oppressive. Flare of duplication. All you have to do, you, you find a goblin who's lying around. You find a red creature and you're like, I'm, I'm sorry, friend, you have to go. It's just like, I need two of the spell I'm casting. Just being able to throw back your opponent's spell in their face, that's amazing. And now, assuming you have at least one red creature out, that's something that's going to have to be in the back of your opponent's minds. Oh, do you have no, Frog Mirror no, Enforcer no, already? Yeah. That's one of the Go funnest it, cards. Oh, uh, yeah. This, it's literally a reference inside a reference. You have Big Mirror Enforcer, Little Frog Might as the prototype, and then the creature is the two of them combined. The name was a little different at one point, but... I think they figured it out. I mean, Frog Mirror Enforcer, you see it, you, right. get, you, get, you get it. <laughs> I really love the callback cards in the Modern Horizon sets. We want to do callbacks. We want to have fun and for players to be able to catch references in the art where possible. To me, callbacks are sort of this, I'll say, dive through Magic's history. If you've played a lot of Magic, you're going to see characters that you're familiar with. You might even see some sort of meta references to cards. You know, we're making this game for ourselves too, right? So we want those moments of excitement. Like, what if I could finally see this thing that I've always thought about and talked about and wanted to see? I really like the the series of cards that we've made where we take three kind of copies of one famous magic card and staple them together into a single card. We had Lana War Tribe in Modern Horizons 1. We had Healer's Flock in Modern Horizons 2. And now we have Mog Mob, which is three Mog Fanatics. If you get it, you're just like, oh, they, they took three of them and put them together. I originally didn't have it as deal divided damage and it was just deal three damage to any target. And someone gave me that suggestion. It's like, oh, this th this is actually a way better illusion to three Mog Fanatics. This particular set's cool because it has a lot of throwback or callbacks to cards that I might remember from the past. So it's this interesting mix of brand new, never before seen, but also with things that are a little more familiar, a little more comfortable. We have Snow-Covered Waste, which is kind of a reference to the first time Eldrazi was a big deck, was called Eldrazi Winter. I mean, the completionist in me loves the fulfillment of, we have five basics, we have a Waste. Okay, we have five Snow-Covered Basics, we didn't have Snow-Covered Waste. Like, of course this is something that should exist. We need to have Snow-Covered Waste. And, and now we do. Favorite part of the process is getting all the little in-jokes in, all the little Easter eggs. <laughs> Wumpus Aberration is one of the ones that is extremely on the nose. Carmen made a joke in a meeting and it made Michael laugh hard enough that it now is just a real card. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I certainly believe her. Her memory is better than mine. I think my favorite in-joke is also my favorite card in this set, and that's Witch Enchanter. Whenever you cast it, you say Witch Enchanter because that's the name of the card. And in Greater Magic, for cards that start with Dis, people will say Witch Spell and you say dispel when you counter it or which member, dismember, etc. So which enchanter, you get to say disenchanter and when it enters the battlefield, it destroys an artifact or an enchantment like the card disenchant. And that was one that made a lot of people just giggle during playtesting and getting to see your game pieces bring people joy in real times is what keeps me coming back to this job. Which enchanter? This one. This, this one. This one. one. This one. <laughs> And there, there, there's a whole backside to the card, too. Yeah, it's right, like there's, that's it. There's more card there. Six, also on the list of cards where it was just kind of 
preposterous enough when I suggested it that the room kind of laughed, and then we thought, well, Rin and Six originally did come from Modern Horizons 1, maybe. The Horizons have uh, matured enough to where we start referencing themselves. <laughs> it's a depiction of Six before it merges with Ren. So there's this just really sensitive scene of them in the forest and like autumn leaves. There are a lot of constraints making the cards that a lot of people on the outside don't realize. In some cases, like token artwork, if a token is on a bunch of different cards, you can't always change the stats of the token. Genku Future Shaper is one that we thought was a cool enough character that we made a bunch of individualized tokens just for this card because we thought it was such a great story beat. So those those creature tokens are all of uh, Genku Zantamiya's children. It's basically him as a stay-at-home dad. So one of the really cool things about working on a Horizon set like this is that you get to be really pointed at the kinds of cards that you're answering. So Thief of Existence was one that in playtesting, it literally was called Time Unraveler because the whole purpose of the card was to check to fairy Time Raveler. Serum Visionary is a classic Modern Horizon style design where we take a famous card, in this case Serum Visions, and we attach it to a creature. So this was a spell, now it's a creature that when it enters, it casts that spell. Psychic Frog is maybe the first card I ever made. I think Psychic Frog is just like the home run nostalgia hit. Psychic Frog, right? Psychic Frog. It is a clear reference to Psychotog as a psychic frog. And it's a psychic frog, it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> Going back to the nostalgic feeling of it, like seeing cards that were a little bit twisted from their old designs, but basically the same thing, kind of just let me feel, you know, what it's like to open a booster back when I was 10 years old. Oh, I'm a huge fan of the retro frame cards. I think uh, retro frame cards just kind of go back to that sense of, you know, what does nostalgia mean for certain people? Holding a card in your hand that looks like, the, you know, the first magic card you ever open up from a pack is, you know, just a really meaningful moment. So I open up a retro frame flooded strand. I see them and it immediately makes me think of when I first started playing magic. And I don't know why, but there's something about the way it was when you started that just feels awesome. For Modern Horizons 3, because it's really touching on callbacks and touching on nostalgia and really building into what I'll call the heart of magic, it, it means that we go and we just build the art in a, in a different way. Let's find out what we love, what our fans love, and, and tap into that. I think it's really important to bring legacy artists back for a set like this because it, like immediately, it ties back in visually to the history of the game. These artists know magic inside and out. They're lore masters, and they've been working with us for so long. We all can put a lot of trust into them. Richard Kane Ferguson, yeah, his work is incredible. You can't look at his art without like hearing like guitar riffs and like sky splitting lightning coming from his work. He just dives into like immense detail. He has a very textured, almost crunchy look that I just adore. Nobody's work looks like that, and I think his work really stands out. The borderless frame break booster fun treatment is always really, really cool. We've only done these really sparingly. You know, really the powerful cards can get amplified by something exciting like that. But for the opponent, like they're feeling that, oh no, like it's, it's so powerful, it's like breaking the card up as it's like showing up. Yeah, so for me today, I drafted Eldrazi, and that's one of my favorite creature types. It's one of my favorite things that they've ever made creatively from Wizards of the Coast. So once I see that, I'm in. These are concept art. I remember digging through the office to find like the original Aldrazi concept art. I think it's really exciting that these versions of this art is on these cards. And this is a mock-up of a serialized card. That means that there's gonna be 250 of these in the whole world. It makes it really special. Yeah, these right. are the dream pools, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which are when you're opening a collector booster, you're hoping to get one of those Eldrazi. I mean, you have a chance to open one of these, and that's an experience that you're just not gonna get very often. You open up something so cool, and this would be like the best open of my entire life if, if I got one of these. Also. I'm a huge fan of Emrakul. I'm a huge fan of Mark Tadine, the artist for this, so I love the artwork for it. I mean, this would probably be, be a card that would never leave my collection if I opened it. Usually what my favorite process is just working with the artists, communicating with them, and they can be really creative. Aether Refinery was an example of a card where we really gave the artists more freedom. The art description was basically just, design as an Aether Refinery, and then they came back with an Aether Refinery, and it was the most beautiful Aether Refinery ever. I'm always surprised 
by the art that comes back. Whenever I write it down, I have this picture in my head of how it's gonna be, but I'm not an artist, I'm about the words. And then the artist will take that and transform it into something amazing. So I think like when I start drawing, usually I try to just think about like, just like the general gesture of what's going on. I'm Evan Fong and I've been doing art for magic since Theros Beyond Death. Um, I do illustration and concept art. I did the Tamiyo card. It's a my first planeswalker. I'm really excited to see her. These are like preliminary sketches I did. This is kind of like my thinking before I go into like sending the sketches to Sarah. I've been looking at a lot of manga artists lately and they do a lot of ink work and pencil work and it may be really inspired to kind of try to get the energy that comes with working with analog media. I really enjoyed the Tamiyo card in particular because we don't have to feel beholden to our current timeline. We can go back and show her as she was in the past. And that's something that is really unique to the Modern Horizon sets getting to see them before they were these powerful overall like best cards and magic characters and mm -hmm. seeing them be like just people, you know, being vulnerable. Yeah. Them. Being yeah. kind of real. Yeah. Being human. I think that was one of the coolest parts about this project was like that showing both things, yeah. right? Getting yeah. a chance to do both. So for the B side of my transformation card where she's kind of exploding into her planeswalker, I was really inspired by a lot of anime I saw growing up, um, like magical girl transformations and things like that. Cause there's a lot of like graphic design elements and like things where the special effects are used like as ribbons or things like that. So I have a little surprise to show you. Okay. Little... <gasps> Look at it. Oh my gosh. Look at it. Oh, it looks so good. It's the textured foil. <gasps> wow. Oh, she looks awesome. Isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh, yeah. You did so good with this. Like oh, I know you. it was a challenge yeah. to like break the frame yeah. and yeah. still yeah. like show her in the middle of it. Oh, that's cool. That, see the texture on it? Yeah. The first time I, I looked at a card that I had commissioned, I cried. Watching someone create art, like getting a sketch back from someone, like I send them a description and it's very rational. I read through it and it makes perfect sense. And then when I see the sketches, no matter how rough they are, the ability of a human to show feeling and to create out of nothing, it just like every time it blows my mind, it doesn't get old. So whenever I open a card and see it like cut and printed by a giant printing machine and, and like it's polished and it's beautiful, knowing how many people had to make that card look good, it's very moving. What's your favorite art card you've got in front of Sarah? I mean, duh, it's young Soren. The front side of Soren's Slipwalker card is him as a human teenager when he's just this lordly little princeling on Innistrad. And young Soren is one of my favorite moments in the whole set that really like gives you that he's like looking off to the side. <sighs> I wanted him to be this pouty, brooding, angsty teenager. And then the art came back and he was exactly that. It's like, oh my gosh, that is perfect. It's fun to do that many planeswalkers and to depict many of them when they're young or they sparked. Like, Raw was my favorite because what does he look like as a young man? And so it's really exciting to see them in a more vibrant and explosive pose to, to where they're actually coming forward. It's amazing to see these planeswalkers come to life. I mean, this is literally showing their spark moment. There's a borderless Ajani, and you can see Ajani and the impact that the death of his brother had on him. It's one of the original planeswalkers, right? Laura and debuted to Johnny and he's still with us today and we get to bring him back over and over again so you know from my perspective as an art director one of the most fun things about it is getting to look back in the catalog of the art kind of bring back some artists like we work with Ron Spencer for one of the double-sided planeswalker cards and he's been making art for magic since like alpha and grist is kind of disgusting she's like this giant monster made out of bugs the other side which we've never seen in magic before is grist as like a little caterpillar and it's like got dripping fangs in all these like purplish reddish like viscera colors and it's so beautiful you could like print it on silk but it's like a gross little like monstrous caterpillar amazing of course, I have a, a lot of love for tons of different cards, and Ophelia is definitely my number one pick. She is in likeness of my personal pet, Ophelia. This is Ophelia. She is a good girl. She is a good girl. <laughs> yeah, so here she is. Here's my, here's my pupper. It's Ophelia, the exuberant shepherd. So the Borderless profile cards give us this chance to show the fans like a really much more intimate, singular look at these powerful creatures and characters. You know, when we draw Planeswalkers or important characters on a magic card, the reality is their faces end up being, you know, like half a centimeter tall because we want to also show part of their body and we want to show weapons and magical effects. So the borderless profile cards are, I think a really special and fun treatment that we do. You think of like an old school battle of like being on horseback and the commander riding past. And if you're lucky, you get like the glint of their eye, right? And that like motivates you to run out and <laughs> throw yourselves on the spears of the enemies. It's just like a gorgeous piece of work. 
We've done a couple borderless profile card versions of the Eldrazi, and it's always kind of like a mind scramble. They're just like these huge, monstrous, sky-filling horrors that destroy everything in their wakes. But Cosmic Podar is an artist. We've worked with a bunch on those, and they're able to like really work within the limits to really produce stuff that feels powerful and exciting in that little, little cardboard square. Have you seen the borderless? The oh, borderless commander nice. cards. Nice, look at that. Right? Ooh la la. Well, I've got the commander decks here. Sweet. Are we gonna Why don't we pass commander? them around? A Merit Lage token with a Sand Warrior on the back. Whoa. I think that gives us an idea of some of the wackiness <laughs> that is possible. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I really love about Modern Horizons 3 is that it's trying to make more magic more exciting to more people. This is not just a modern set. This is a set for everyone. From the very beginning, we saw it change people's commander decks. Commander players love powerful cards. Magic players love powerful cards. I love powerful cards. And so the angle that we found for the commander decks was, what if these are commander decks that feel like they are about the modern format? One of the things about Modern Horizons 3 commander decks, those cards in there, they're commander legal. The cards that we're releasing will have two different expansion symbols. Some of them will have the regular Modern Horizons 3 expansion symbol. Those will all be legal and modern. And then some of them will have the MH3 commander expansion symbol. Yes, I know that's kind of awkward. The product's called Modern Horizons 3. I didn't want to let us be held back because, yeah, modern's in the name. Once you open the package, they're just amazing magic cards. Oh, wow. These are the new commanders for the pre-cons? Wow, that is awesome. The Eldrazi Incursion deck, commanded by Ulalek, fused atrocity. For the Eldrazi deck, Eldrazi are a big deal in modern. They've been you know, very impactful for quite a few years now. I just love having gigantic monsters that crush everything in front of them. The Creative Energy deck is led by Satya, Aetherflux genius. In this deck, you want to build up your reserves of energy and then spend them all on a huge effect to sort of blow out your opponents in a big blast. The energy reserve, you are going to <laughs> fill it up and, and use the energy. There are, uh, f I think it looks like at least four copy tokens to give you an idea. That's a lot of copy That's tokens. That's a lot of copy tokens. The Tricky Terrain deck is led by Omo, Queen of Vesuva. This is definitely the weirdest of the decks. She can not only give creatures all creature types, but she can give lands all land types. I love combining weird cards together that aren't normally played in Commander. I love winning with things that nobody expects. The Graveyard Overdrive deck is led by Disa the Restless. Now this is an old, old character. She appeared in a whole lot of flavor text from Ice Age. Serious long range callback there. But then mechanically, she calls back to something a little less ancient, which is Tarmogoyf, which is, you know, was a huge player in modern for most of the format's history. This Jun deck has a lot of goyfs in it. Our good friend Tarmogoyf, our old friend Lurgoyf. And she makes tokens that are copies of Tarmogoyf because that is one of the greatest cards of all time. A Lurgoyf themed commander? That's unique. It let us just get more cards into more people's hands, right? Like we knew there were commander players out there that were wanting cards that were custom for them and the commander decks let, let us do that. For players who like a flashier experience, we have the Collector's Edition Commander decks for MH3. These feature a new kind of foiling process called Ripple Foil that when you turn the card, it ripples like water. They look super cool and can only be found in the Collector's Edition. These new commanders, like, whenever a new legendary creature comes out, everybody always looks at, okay, what can I do in Commander with these things? So I'm pretty stoked about it. Oh, I, I can't wait. Commander's my favorite. I think it's really exciting to have like new Commander decks, new Commander options. It's hard to not like the Eldrazi one, but I like the one that messes with the lands the most. Yeah, the lands deck is really weird. I want to try it out. I think that these decks are going to especially appeal to people who are fans of both formats, the modern format and the Commander format. Like, you re get to play something that feels like a modern deck, but is big enough for a commander table. One of the first things I asked was, where can I play this? Because of course it's gonna be in paper, but like, is it gonna be on Arena? And they said, it's gonna be on Arena. And I just thought, well, you know, there goes my summer. We want to bring magic to fans, no matter how you play. If you want a fast game, Arena is the way to do it. And this is gonna be one of the highest power formats of all time introduced to Arena. It's fun to play with strong cards. It just is. The effect that you can draft on a Modern Horizons 3 on Arena, I think is the thing that 
that players are the most excited about. Once it goes up on Arena, like you're not gonna hear from me. Like I'm not calling you, I'm not calling anybody else here. I'm gonna be drafting. I'm gonna draft it nonstop. It's more accessible than ever and easier than ever to be able to just jump in and, and play with these cards. A big part of it is just the scale. There's just so much to it. There's so much complexity. There's so many cards. Like this is not a small set. Modern Horizons 2 was something we talked about back in the day, but it was just not possible at the time. Arena did not have the depth of the history of Magic. In the years since, we've shipped more old card sets, we've added a ton of old cards, old mechanics, and when Modern Horizons 3 rolled around, we decided to go for it. Usually when we interact with the Arena team, it's about, we need to word things differently so it works on Arena. The Magic Arena is a computer program and it, it needs things to be very specific and very particular. We want these cards to work on Arena, we want the interface to be smooth, we want the gameplay to be fast. Okay, what needs to change? Folks over on Studio X will regularly reach out, say, you know, does this work? Is this something that Arena can handle? Here are the cards, do they work? Is, it, is this card possible? And then they dig in and they're like, okay, these ones work. And then other ones they're like, this will never ever work in a hundred million years. Like, please, please, please change this. Every once in a while we push back and ask for slightly different words or like, is there a way we can get this effect as a trigger instead of a replacement effect, that kind of thing. To their credit, 99% of the cards, we don't have to change. And the answer to does this work is yeah, good to go. But in those meetings, we when we're going back and forth with Studio X, it's very much as magic players. Everybody in the room wants the coolest cards possible. So how do we make that happen? We knew Modern Horizons 3 was coming when we designed Timeless. When we were putting all the pieces together and figuring out what we wanted Timeless to look like. We were sort of rethinking the way the Mastery Pass works for Modern Horizons 3. And it's going to function similarly to what players who go to Magic Fests or, or Magic Cons now uh, would remember as a prize wall. I was a big fan of the prize wall coming to tabletop events years ago, and it sort of changed how people engaged with those large events. And I'm excited to see how Arena players respond to having access to something like a prize wall. The first Modern Horizons was really popular. Modern Horizons 2 kind of identified that there was a much bigger audience for this than, than just your hardcore modern players. The set is about nostalgia and history, and this is Magic's history, and it's now Arena's history. It's really exciting. Yeah, so the people I got to play with today, you know, we're not talking about just game designers. This isn't just work for them. They show up and they're clearly fans of the game. I mean, you could see them looking around to see what our reactions were. They were proud of the decks that they drafted. They got exciting opening cards that they designed. And it really comes through when you get to sit down with actual cards in your hand, because you can see their face and you can see how excited they are about it. It's like your frog's coming down, Jeremy. <laughs> Bye, Oh my God. Better luck next time. Solitude, huh? Solitude. Okay. There you go, my okay. friend. A plus one, plus one counter onto Madogo. Dead jellyfish. Do you regret giving this trample? Do I regret giving? No. Yeah. The Wumpus the Wumpus needs <laughs> trample. I'm gonna play Solar Transformer. Okay. Uh, enters. I get three energy. I go to five. Play Scurry of Gremlins. I get two one one red gremlin creatures. Look, there he is. Then I get an amount of energy equal to the number of creatures I control. Okay. This card has one more ability. Okay. It's a very important ability. Does it involve the word haste? It does involve the word <laughs> haste. Four, eight. Uh, Are you serious? Eleven. Right now? 14. Is this is real. This is actually happening. This is actually happening. <laughs> I'm coming at you for 30 damage. May I go to blocks? <laughs> yeah, you, you can block. You can block for sure. I'll, I'll block this one. I'm hitting you for 25. Good game. Yeah, good game. Good game. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck, Mike? <laughs> you had nothing. The bigger Magic fan you are, the more you're going to enjoy this set. This has almost been three, four years in the making. So just being a fan of like, yo, I'm going to rip this open and give me some mythics, right? Give me some, give me some broken rares. You could, I could still like remember the smell of opening the booster bag. Isn't that weird? I love Magic. I play Magic almost every lunch hour. <laughs> almost lunch. I know. I'm really just hoping that the people around me feel the passion that went into the product and giggle about the references. The best moments ever are when, when fans like open a pack and they, they gasp or they think like, what, I never imagined they would do something like this. Playing magic cards in real life is, is second to none. Marshall, I'm unstoppable. <laughs> you've, you've never been stoppable. Okay. <laughs>